You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Attack on Titan After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Attack on Titan After Show. Yeah, welcome back to Attack on Titan. Every time I hear this song, I'm immediately excited. You just want to run around on top of buildings and kill Titans. Well, yeah. Or, you know, other things. Whatever. Sounds like a good day to me. Just Titans. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. This song always gets you pumped up, no matter what. Like, you could be, like, on your way to work in the morning, and then all of a sudden, if this comes onto your iPod, you're like, yes, well, I'm on my way to work. Well, that's why I put it on every morning, and so I'm, I'm always ready to go every day. I'm like, now I can go do anything that the day has set it for me. But it's one of those songs that makes you want to drive faster, so if you're on the 101 and traffic's not moving and this comes on, you're sitting in your car going, ah. I'm sitting in my car switching lanes like a mofo. I'm like, oh, 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 it's weaving in and out. And then I get arrested. You don't get on the 101 very often, do you? I just I get do. road warrior on the 101, and you know, that ends about as well as you'd expect it to. Oh, dear. For everyone outside of California, the 101 is a freeway, and it's not known for being pleasant. And, and freeway couldn't be more of an oxymoron. <laughs> well, obviously, clearly, in the booth, ladies and gentlemen, is our good friend Stephen Lemieux. As you can see, that's why we got this gorgeous thing playing right here. Yeah, and but Stephen who are you guys? Yeah. Uh, who yeah, are you? We haven't, we haven't talked about who we are yet. And Maybe joining we'll us, yeah, well, I was waiting for you guys to get over the 101. But it's You're never right. over the 101. No, you can never get over the 101. But, Continue. John Quick. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? And stuck on the 101 perpetually, Katie Cullen. <laughs> Salutations! Stuck on the 405 perpetually, Megan Salinas. Oh gosh, you wouldn't cut me, catch me down on the 405 <laughs> in the morning, no way. And this is now and this is the Californians. an official recreation of the Saturday Night Live sketch, The Californians. John, <laughs> what are you doing here? Why do you go to Culver City? <laughs> I just took Beverly Glenn through the carriers. <laughs> I came out on Sunset Boulevard, took that to Robertson Boulevard and <laughs> down to Venice Boulevard and over to... All right, sorry. But, but why do you know about it? Why are you ever in that part of town? But who are you? I'm Dave Klein. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I go to my dentist in that part of town. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's not recreating this sketch. So, we were well we, done, by we the re watched Jeez. the same episode this week as now this week it was on Toonami, and we could watch the English version of it because today we're going to be joined by on the phone, via phone, Josh Greeley, who will be joining us shortly to talk about Armin's big monologue that he had today. So, exciting stuff. But before we go on that, we should probably talk a little bit about the episode and recap it briefly again, where we get Captain Freakout, as we like to call him, <laughs> going insane over the fact that he can't go over, that there's a titan and a human, and what are you? I don't know. <laughs> I'm human. Ooh, wrong answer. Oh, no, wrong I'm answer. titan. Also and the wrong answer. Speaking of, I'm a lumberjack, and I'm okay. Just speaking of comparing the original Japanese to the new, um, to the English dub, how great is Chris Sabat at playing somebody who's emotionally compromised and just angry and frightened? <laughs> You'd think he have experience playing angry, screaming characters. <laughs> 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 yeah, a, a quick one sentence summation of the episode: screaming, screaming, cannon explosions, more screaming, um, surpri surprising a bit of logic from Aaron. Uh, Armin does the greatest salute known to mankind. Well, Armin, in my mind, in this episode, and I didn't say this last week, but in my mind, he became Ace Attorney. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever play those games, the like action lines. You know, it was Hold also it. every action objection. line, but every time it was like, yeah, the objection thing, the point. Like every time we like switch the thing, like, oh, I came up with a new angle, and then it would do that reverse. I was like, this is Ace Attorney. <laughs> I'm watching Ace Attorney, and it's amazing. Attack on Attorney. Attack attorney on Attorney. On I like Attorney on Titan. Attorney. 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 I can only attorney. imagine Aaron Sorkin just like watching this and going, oh my god, I had a new way of do walk and talks. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we may have someone on the line right now. Oh, oh, right. Right. Really? So we're joined here by Josh Greeley. Thank you so much for coming on the phone. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Really excited. So are we. <laughs> we're incredibly wow. excited. How y'all doing? So we're far, so good. Thanks so much for coming on. 
thanks for having me. So we're excited. You have. So I, I heard. I heard something about Attack on Attorney. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we decided that Armin in this episode, basically all of his lines were switching and going wild and crazy with the effects. Reminded, at least reminded me of Ace Attorney, the video game, <laughs> and the way that it works. He's pre Hobo Phoenix Wright. <laughs> uh, yes. He's but, a good one. I do enjoy him. But speaking of video have games, of the, have you played any of the Phoenix Wright games? Yes. Yes, I have. And They're speaking of fun, which, man. you actually have done voice work for both video games and anime. Yes, actually. So, do you have a... Have a would you, do you have a list? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I do, yes, but I was going to ask if you had a preference over which you preferred doing. Oh, in term, uh, between anime and video games? Yeah. Uh, they both have their, you know, they both have their challenges. They both have the things that make them fun. I, I, I can't really say whether I prefer one over the uh, one over the other. Video game work tends to pay better, but <laughs> okay. anime tends to, yeah. So video game work uh, wins. Anime work always uh, is always fun, just because that was one of the anime was one of the things that I fell in love with as a kid. So it's kind of my passion, I guess. Yeah, and you started with ADV, which I, uh, that when I was a kid, that's who I always thought of as like the big anime purveyor was ADV. I was like every anime I right. watched was ADV. Yeah. So that must have been like, really exciting. Like, you know, they're the first guys to put out Evangelion. They also mm -hmm. put out uh, they they brought Excel Saga to the U.S. and uh, pretty and most of the Shinichi Watanabe or Nabashin shows like Excel Saga. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, the ADV brought a whole bunch of stuff over to the U.S. I, I think they actually started before Funimation, but I, I can't say for 100 percent sure. I think you're correct. I think I've read that somewhere that ADV was the first big dubbing company in North America. Yeah, I know for certain it was the it's, first it's, one it's I thought It's weird of. that two of them ended up in Texas. I, I don't know how <laughs> that ended up. It seems like there's a lot of voice work in Texas, actually. It seems like that's one of the biggest places for doing voice work. Yeah, it's it's really become kind of a hub for a lot of different things, voice work uh, definitely being one of the foremost. Uh, that you, we're, We've been getting a lot more work out of Austin. There's some video game companies forming down there. There's Ocatron mm -hmm. 5000 up here in Dallas as well, and that's where Funimation does all of the Dragon Ball Z games. That's where we recorded the latest uh, Loop in the Third series. Uh, and, yeah, there's also Dallas Audio Post here that, uh, that handles uh, a ton of different commercial work from all over the country. We do like our recording here in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> You've got your pick over there. Yeah. So I have to ask you, this is something that I've been curious about. And watching this episode, you had this giant monologue as Armin, and a lot yeah. of screaming went into it. And one of the things that I've always wondered is, <laughs> since you clearly listening to you on the phone here, you have a very different voice naturally than Armin's. And how hard it is yeah. it to throw your voice like that and then do these intense emotions and keep that voice while you're doing it? it it's keeping the voice at least in those in those instances it was a lot easier than i thought it would be i was really afraid that i would have trouble keeping it but because it's because his voice sits in in a much higher register than what i usually and than how i usually talk uh when i had to scream i didn't have to push or use as much air as i would if i was using like my normal voice or a deeper voice since my throat was was tighter yeah so uh, it actually ended up being a lot easier to to, main, to get the screams out and to maintain the screams. It was more or less uh, a challenge of whether or not we got the uh, the performance across, not whether or not the the screaming uh, came out. <laughs> yeah, right. how interesting. Is there anything in particular you do to get in character with Armin? Uh, no, I just had I had a word. Uh, uh, for a while, I would just say his name a couple of times to get into the voice, or I'd, or I'd say, Aaron! <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm imagining uh, so that Armin has Arm, this thing Arm where he talks in third person. A lot of his voice is really just a matter of, you know, pushing the air forward uh, and getting into that higher register that without sounding too nasal. That's really the challenge of keeping the voice, I think. And I love how you just immediately went right <laughs> into it. It's just, I know uh, you can't see us right now, but we're all grinning <laughs> like idiots. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a question for you, like uh, I've I've seen the entire anime and I, and I'm reading the manga and I'm all like almost like caught up all the way on the manga, but like Armin uh -huh. really is the character that changes the most from when you first meet him to like where he has progressed and is progressing. When you right. kind of were in were first told, it's like okay, this is kind of the character that you're playing. What was like after kind of reading over him? What was kind of like your analysis of like Armin a little bit like as a as a human being and then also kind of like a little bit mm -hmm. as like a his function in the story. 
Right. Well, I actually, uh, I, I had gotten to follow the show as it was being simulcast. So I, I think I started on the simulcast by the time episode four had aired. So uh, I, I watched that every week when uh, on Hulu. And Armin, especially after last night's episode, when I, when I first episode, and that's when I really started to, as an actor, fall in love with the character. Because up to that point, uh, you know, I know a lot of people are, always say that or a lot of people have been have come up to me and said you know i always thought armin was this kind of useless character that just cried and, and sat around and did anything and did nothing and i was and to me from the get-go it, it was that okay no armin's real smart he just has a horrible self-image yeah he he, he doesn't see himself as, as as someone who is worthy of of his friends uh of of their bravery or of uh and he, he doesn't see himself as just really equal to anyone he just sees himself as a burden as, as somebody that holds people back and uh you you start to see even early on in the series you start to see little tidbits little bits and pieces of of uh of his own bravery like of his bravery to join uh, the cadets with Aaron and Mikasa, and his his decision later on to uh, well, that might be a spoiler, so I won't say that. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're trying not to um, spoil anything past the episode we just viewed. <laughs> yeah, we, we right, watched yeah, it all on like Hulu as well, uh, but yeah. But, but there's there's yeah there's so many things with Armin and his decisions and the, and the things that he does in the show even early on where you, where you see he is the, he's a brave guy he's he has a a wonderful intelligence and a wonderful soul about him. He's very much a pacifist, but he's not afraid to get into the thick of it w- when it really counts or when he has to. Uh, the, the only thing that was ever holding him back was himself and then, or his thoughts of himself. So that episode in, uh, that we saw last night, when it first aired, uh, when I saw it on the simulcast, that moment, especially my favorite moment, because uh, it's also so visual, uh, is when Aaron tells him, look, I... I'm entrusting you with this because you always keep a level head. If it wasn't for you, me and Mika so more than likely wouldn't be here. And you see uh, that that awesome wide shot of of him with the the Titan corpse breaking behind him as it shatters. His his view of himself kind of shatters with it. And it was it's such a cool moment. <laughs> and that that entire scene is where I was like, okay, I want to play that character <laughs> if I get a chance. Well, so, and then you did. So yeah. I mean, what was? Yeah, what, what, yeah, yeah. and then yeah. I freaked out, and I'm still freaking out over it. <laughs> so, Attack on Titan has been, like you said, extremely popular since the simulcast, and Armin mm-hmm. is one of the big three roles. Was there a lot of pressure going into it? Were you nervous? Oh yeah, absolutely. I I wanted to be able to do the character justice. I also wanted to be able to put a little bit of myself as an actor into the character. But really, the the big challenge, the big thing that I, that I was really nervous about starting off was the fact that it, that I'm a dude and the original <laughs> actor for Armin was a female, and 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 I think a lot of the fandom was really expecting it to to go that route for the dub to go that route as well. But uh, and and I think Mike McFarland. Uh, I don't know if if I would go so far as to say that if he took a gamble casting me or casting a casting a male in the care in, in the role, but it it definitely was something that we were like, okay, they may <laughs> not like it. So, uh, but I think overall, I'm very pleased with it. it. It's some of the it's playing Armin is some of the work that I'm probably most proud of in the ten years that I've been doing this. Wow, well, that's a big statement. And all of the cast for Attack on Titan, you guys have just a phenomenal group of actors working on the show. What's it getting? What's it like getting to play off of such a great cast? It's uh, it's so easy. <laughs> it's so <laughs> wonderful. It's, uh, and getting to hear everybody too. Like uh, I think so far, one of the most chilling performances in the show uh, was in the very first one was uh, Jessica Cavanaugh that plays Aaron's mom. Uh, she blows me away every time, especially when she really just starts losing it and, and telling them to no, leave me, run. I can't. If you, if you stay here, I'm going to die. Uh, you're going to die. Uh, she did a wonderful job. Everybody else has just been fantastic to listen to, uh, especially. Uh, I really enjoy, uh, especially last night. We got to hear Chris Abbott playing uh, <laughs> Warman. Which I'm always like, uh, being an old school anime fan, it, it's always funny to me because I'm like, I, I hear Vegeta. <laughs> I always hear Vegeta's voice. Like he's screaming at me. <laughs> he's screaming at me. Uh, 
He just actually he goes, Kakarot! I, mean, uh, I, mean, I was chilling, uh, I was hanging with last night, actually, while, uh, while we were watching it, the, the writer for that episode, Tyson Reinhardt, uh, was hanging with me, too, and the ADR scripts between him and, and J. Michael Caden have also just been super easy. They've been damn near flawless from the get-go, uh, we, uh, and just made it super easy. All right. That's awesome. Because, yeah, it's such a technical process, that, uh, but everybody is so professional at it that I imagine that they have it down to a science to make everything work and flow smoothly. Yeah. AD, ADR script writing is, is, uh, is, is, is what the name implies. It's an adaptation uh, as much as it is a, uh, an homage. So we have to, yeah, there, there is a lot of, I don't know if we, you, if we can ever get it down to an exact science, <laughs> but it, 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 it's definitely fun and challenging in its own right. So something a little off topic that I'm just curious about. I was talking to Todd Habercorn okay. a couple of weeks ago, and I found out that he also does uh -huh. audio books uh, on top of yeah. anime and video games. Is that something that you do as well? That, uh, no, that is actually something. It's really funny that you asked me that. Though. That was the first thing that I that really got me interested in doing voice work. Really? Uh, when I was really yeah, when I was really young, uh, I used to have to travel all over the Midwest uh, with my dad for his art shows. He's a he's a well, uh, he's a very well-known Western artist. He does a lot of uh, Western-themed cowboy and Indian type paintings. Yeah. Uh, oil paintings and sculptures. And, and so we used to go around the, uh, the West, uh, the Midwest and the West part of the United States all the time for shows. And uh, this was the age of Game Boy. And so whenever the game, whenever my Duracell batteries would run out of power, we would pop in a, uh, a book on tape. And, and some of my first book on tapes, my favorite ones, were the ones that were read by uh, Anthony Heald. Uh, he did like the Star Wars Shadows of the Empire uh, narration for their Ooh, book on nice. tape, and and I really like I, I was a huge Star Wars geek, and then especially with uh, the audio books, they were they were a great distraction and a great source of inspiration too. Uh, I, I have, I, it's real funny that I I kind of set out initially to try and do that first, and then I fell into anime first, and it's been what I've done the most, and it's just it's been a fun ride. I would love to do audiobooks if the opportunity presents itself, but... See, to me, they sound you know, far more difficult to do than anything else, because you have to do so many takes, and depending on how long the book is, too. That's just so much right. volume that you have to and, get and, done. And, and with this day and age, the way that uh, technology is now, a lot of times the, those companies will have the actors record it at home with their own material, and so we'll record it at home, we'll edit it ourselves and then and send it off so that they can mix it and do whatever they want to with it but yeah now it's 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 just it's real weird yeah that makes it a lot of sense yeah the industry's got to definitely be shifting for all that and speaking of the mm -hmm. industry and getting into it in general um i know it was 10 years ago for you but when mm -hmm. you first got into the industry um i'm, I'm kind of curious how you got in in the first place and also mm -hmm. If like now you're so uh, clearly by what you just did with Armin's voice, you're so comfortable with just switching voice on a fly. Were you that good when mm -hmm. you first got in, or has that been something that now you're much more uh, confident with? Going that high pitch, no. I didn't have to know it. Yeah, I, 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 I've kind of done, I guess, vocal. Your 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 throat or your voice is a muscle, just like anything else. It right. just takes the right type of exercises to to tone it and to get to to know it very well. So, but it's an ongoing process and it changes all constantly. Uh, but when I first got in, or how I first got in, really was uh, uh, I had been in theater since I was about five years old. I got started. My mother put me into theater because she was tired of me reenacting my favorite Star Wars. And so uh, started that. Also, again, very huge fan of animation very early on in, uh, in my childhood. It's remained my passion my entire life. And uh, was also got very, got into anime when my little small Texas town finally got cable and we had uh, Cartoon Network. And I, I learned of this thing called Toonami. And yeah. Uh, that's where I got the first C, Dragon Ball, and Sailor Moon, and, you know, the... Uh, Oh, what was it? Uh, Tenshi Muyo and Oh yeah, Alakadar. you just listed off all of our childhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to love Tenshi Muyo. Uh huh. And uh, I started a I started a fan forum a years ago when Angel Fire was still a thing. Yeah, I remember and, Angel Fire. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> through that, I, I met a, uh, a friend of mine. I still a friend of mine. He did some voice work for ADV back in the day. His name is Glenn Fraser. Uh, he. Uh, he went to high school with the girl who was the voice uh, for the English dub of Nadia 
uh, she was Nadia in Nadia's Secret of Blue Water that ADV Films yeah. often did. And went to school with her, got the phone number for ADV Films Monster Island branch in Austin, and so and gave it to me. And then I ended up just calling them once a month for like five or six months straight and saying, hey, I'm still interested. I still want to do this. <laughs> and, and then finally in January, in, in January of 04, I, I got my first call down for a show called Wedding Peach, which is kind of Sailor Moony, I guess. <laughs> uh, and That's they so liked me enough to bring me back. That's supposed to be incredibly exciting, no matter what the oh show was. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're the oh, yeah, example. The Persistence the is key. I, I still remember that session. And uh, it, it was also, uh, that was back when they didn't pay for uh, for doing bit work and stuff. Because that's what it, the, the really? sessions that they brought people in for that were brand new, they called Scream and Die sessions. Uh, which is basically if uh, they, they they throw like four or five people into the booth at the, at the same time, and they cover all the bit parts and all of the the background yeah. crowd scenes. Like if we're at a soccer game, uh, then we're the guys in the in the crowd cheering on you know cheering on the team. Or if uh, we're in a mall, we're we're just all talking like we're in a mall. Uh, and we just did that, and I, I did that for about eight months just going down or going to the studio doing that and then uh getting a free copy of the dvd when it came out as compensation i did that for about eight months to a year wow there you uh, go and I, finally, <laughs> and I finally got my first uh paid voice gig with them uh for a live action korean movie called no blood no tears and then i just and then it just kept on going so, I mean, you're the example of persistence is key then. I mean, you really like yeah. calling six months straight. You were working the free job, which a lot of people in the industry tend to have to do. It's that, that type of right. sucky thing you have to do, and you made it. So, I mean, that's that's an incredible, like, really cool story to hear. Yeah, man, I'll tell you what. It's it, I never imagined that it would go as, as far. Like, my when I first set out, my initial ambition was to just, you know, see, for my own sake, just see if I could make it to the point where I, I had just a named character in a show. Yeah. And I got that within the first year and a half, and I was like, okay, well, that's the extent of my ambition. I guess I'll just ride this. <laughs> and, and now, ten years later, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been really cool. It's been one hell of a ride, and I'm looking forward to seeing where else it goes. Well, and you have one hell of a vocal range, as you just demonstrated a little while ago. You've played... Oh, well, thank you. You've played people like Armin, and then you've also played some pretty serious villains, too. What do you think is more fun to play? Uh, villains. Villains <laughs> are my bread and butter. I love villains. Any any character, especially uh, especially one that where I can do just like a psychotic laugh is always is always a highlight of any session because you know villains were the thing or were villains are so iconic i mean i think really one of my first favorite villains was emperor palpatine again star wars <laughs> geek i'm sorry uh and shredder from the tv and, yes. and, all those, and all those other characters like that you know these these awesome villains that are just all about uh bravado and, and and just being crazy basically and th those characters are an absolute blast to play and then you have the opposite end of the villains where they uh you'll you'll have a character like there was a character i had in a, in a show called corpse princess uh, uh he he is essentially the villain other uh, the primary villain for the majority of the show but then near the end you start to get his backstory and you start to see why he is the way he is and then you start to you have this confliction where you're like okay maybe he's not so bad or i actually understand why he's doing what he's doing and those characters are also it, villains in their own right are just they're great a lot i love of, villains i mean a lot of times as you're mentioning with that character villains are the ones who have the most complex layers to them yes very much so but and but and that's not always the case uh yeah well yeah you know you also get that with with uh with the uh, protagonist, and, and Armin, I think, is a prime example of how you can get a very layered character. Uh, not not necessarily as in as some of the, some of the villains, like I just mentioned, or like my character in, in Corpse Princess, but he definitely does have uh, a whole lot of baggage that he's carrying and that he has to work through. Definitely. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, and going back to Attack on Titan, do you have a favorite? You know, being a fan of the show, do you have a favorite character mm -hmm. besides Armin? <laughs> Uh, that's a toss-up between Sasha and Hanji. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this I, would, I would actually say probably leaning more towards Hanji, just because, A, I like nerdy science 
chicks. Uh, a, she's all, B, she's also crazy. And C, she's voiced by Jessica Cabello, which is one of, like, I, I love that woman. If you've never <laughs> met her or if you've never seen any of this uh, stuff that she's been in before, uh, I think one of her big, her first big roles in anime was for ADV Films. Uh, she was the original voice of Excel in Excel, in Excel Saga, which is oh, kind of perfect. That. When you when you compare Excel to Hanji, they're they're kind of the same character in a lot of ways. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> you should have seen Katie's face. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah, she just lit Gas, up here in the studio. You know, breathe in, <laughs> mouth agape. It was. <laughs> oh, give me some credit. <laughs> Well, that, that was a positive thing that you said. <laughs> Excel Saga was an awesome sound show. like I'm dying. <laughs> yes, it was. Excel Saga was great. And, uh, have you ever seen any other Nabashine titles? Like, uh, uh, well, I mean, there's Pony Pony Poemi, which was after, which came after Excel Saga and was ten sane condensed into just two episodes. Really? Uh, and then there's uh, my favorite. My personal favorite is uh, 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 Narama Daikon Brothers. Uh, the the creator, Nabashin, in one of his favorite American films of all time is the Blues Brothers. And so he decided to make a Blues Brothers anime, basically. And it's, <laughs> oh, my and, God. And, it's, and, it, and it's a full-on musical. Like, they, they sing Blues Brothers-style music at, at least, like, five or six songs per episode. And uh, both the sub and the dub are, are fantastic. Nice. So I, that's going on my Netflix queue. Yeah, <laughs> if it's on God, Netflix. I wish it was on Netflix. Yeah, that's always <laughs> the question. But yeah, I haven't seen that one. But yeah, Excel Saga was great, so I'll have to check that out. But we're actually running out of time, so thank you so much for joining us. And where can people find you? My pleasure, man. Uh, best place, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Josh Greeley. Or uh, just also search my name, Josh Greeley, into Facebook. You're, you're welcome to add me there. There's, uh, there's a fan page, but uh, most people just add me. And uh, I usually accept. I just use my own page as a fan page, so... Uh, I'll accept any friend request, really. And, uh, yeah, the Twitter, and that's about it. All right, and, and one last thing before you go, since you said you were a Star Wars fan, favorite scene in Star Wars? <laughs> oh, God, man. That's like asking to pick a favorite child. <laughs> I, I, don't, uh, I don't know, you said that you <laughs> act him out, so come on. It looks like all these, all these favorite scenes. Uh, any, uh, probably, well, the first, some of the moments with, any moment with Yoda in uh, Empire Strikes Back. I think a lot of my a lot of my real world personal philosophies that I adhere to these days came from that little puppet. Well, a lot of this a lot of this most recent episode was do or do not. There is no try. It really yeah. was. Yeah, it was. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much again. It was a pleasure having you no, on. Thank you guys. Yeah, it was an honor to be on. Thank you so much. And yep. you guys, uh, you guys have a good one. You yeah, too. Definitely. Thank, thank you, you, Josh. Bye. Yeah, for, for fans who don't know, by the way, um, Josh and a lot of the other people for the Attack on Titan show, um, they live tweet during uh, during the Toonami run, so that's great, too. Yeah, that's really cool. And before we wrap up, Katie actually has the winner to announce. Yes, I have the winner of the mug giveaway. It is YouTube user Shiny Buster Baby. Please uh, message me on YouTube, and we will get shipping information figured out, and I'll send that your way. So congratulations, and thanks so much. Yeah, thank you so <laughs> thank, much. And thank you so much for everybody who participated. We really appreciate you guys, and just people who comment in general. It's great. Yeah, yes. it's awesome. We, we read all of them, so yeah. thank you we so do. much. So don't forget, comment on both YouTube and, and on iTunes. iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, slap us with a five-star rating. Let us know what you think. Or just slap us. <laughs> Guys, I'm Dave Klein. You can find us next week uh, once again. And you can find me on Twitter at the Dave Klein. That is K-L-E-I-N. You can find me on Twitter. My name is Megat. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at the Menguin. That's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-U-I-N. And I'm John Quick. You can find me on Twitter at, at NowQuick. I'm Katie Cullen. You can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at Kiaxet. That's K-I-A-X-E-T. I'm also on the Sword Art Online panel and the upcoming Ruby panel. And we will see you guys next time. Later. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.